Welcome back to syndicatednews.net. And today, we've gathered the Miami Bureau, which is Stuart Stewart and Dina Stewart and Dorothy. And we're all here. Is everybody here? Everybody present? I'm here. I think so. Hi, Ruthie. We're, we're both alive on South Beach. That's right. They're alive on South Beach. And when you come to syndicatednews.net, you go to the purple menu button on the left. It's a little on the lower side on the left, and you'll see it's purple. And in there, you'll find episodes, interviews, their front page, the works. You can even see Miami weather. Dina and Stuart, I wanted to ask you, did the book fair end yet? Well, it was actually phenomenal. The book fair just ended. It started last Wednesday. We had an opportunity to interview John Sales. John Sales won the MacArthur Genius Award wow. when he was 32 years old. And what that meant was he received $32,000 for five years so that he could go ahead and continue producing, directing, writing his screenplays and movies that were very well acclaimed. He did Return of the Secaucus 7, extended over several days. There are over 400 variety of authors in every field and genre. It was exciting because you just walked around feeling real books. It wasn't Kindles, but real paperback books. And we had an opportunity to interview several really fabulous authors, people that I had read and heard about. Are they going to be in your shows within the next couple of weeks and months? Absolutely. Um, we did a fabulous interview with Tom Hayden. You remember Tom Hayden? Yes. Okay. He was the originator of the SDS on the West Coast. I believe Mark Rudd did it from Columbia University in New York. And the Chicago 7. He was one of them. He was one of the leaders of that group. We had Abby Hoffman and Jerry Rubin and just a whole bunch of others. Did you interview anyone else? We did, but just in terms of Tom Hayden, what I found fascinating was the fact that we were able to ask him about the Occupy Wall Street and the other Occupy protest movement. Good, don't tell us. I want I everyone thought. to be sitting here with bated breath waiting for your show when, it, when you actually broadcast it. Now, I understand oh. you also interviewed Pete Hamill. I asked Pete Hamill what it was like standing next to Robert Kennedy the night he got shot. Did he tell and you? Yeah. He, he told us. And Do you have that on him, your interview? He, he brought it back. He brought himself oh. back to that point that you could see you could see the tears in his eyes. And he talked about his great friendship. Oh, and that, oh my gosh. It is just riveting when you see what he had to say back at that moment, which was so many years ago. Don't say another word. Leave it so that our audience will be sitting here waiting. Now, Stuart, I hear, what about gambling going on in Miami? What's that about? That's the hottest game in town. What's going on? Well, there is so much money involved in this. There's a organization. They're the largest gambling resort combination in the world out of Malaysia bought the land where the Miami Herald wow. is. And they're going to turn that into a 5,000 room hotel, 60 story building, and the largest gambling casino in the Western world with a marina. And this is what they'd like to do. Now, along comes Steve Wynn from the Las Vegas Steve Wynn. Yes, yes, I know. And he wants to put a, a gambling casino in here. And now another group wants to put one in at the Fountain Blue, and another one wants to put one in a little further up at a hotel called Diesel Land. And suddenly they're talking about all the money and all the jobs and everything. It's and true. somebody said, the gambling interest. They hired all of the, the top lobbyists, and everybody is saying this is going to be great for the community. And then along comes a guy like Norman Brayman. Now, Norman Brayman no, is a billion... No, don't tell us. Leave it in your show. I okay. want people to have to want to come here, and now they have five different reasons to come and listen to the Alive on South Beach on syndicatednews.net. Now, the other thing I wanted to know about, uh, Dina, what about the boat show? Is that over or is that coming? That's first coming. I believe that's going to be here in February. In February? And Yeah, and what they do is, uh, they take up the entire land of the convention center, and they build a marina 
right on land. So the people who come in, it is, it's a lot of fun. It's beautiful. People come to play. They have their giant yachts. People could walk on them and just fantasize. So that's another big event that happens down here and just causes a lot of traffic and a lot of people to enjoy the town and walk around and go to the restaurants and the shops. So that's don't another. Forget, don't forget Beautiful. the clubs. And Stuart, what about the film festival? Is that come or gone or what? It is an a, the film festival. There, there must be 20 film festivals down here. There's a oh. Italian film festival, a Jewish film festival, a Colombian film festival, a Brazilian film festival, okay, wait a, a gay film festival. And then there's a festival of festivals of festivals where... It's wonderful if if you love movies, Great. go to one of these festivals because you see the best pictures from all over the world. Can we put the schedule of film festivals for Alive on South Beach at syndicatednews.net pages? Oh, I'm sure. I'm see sure why not. That would be fantastic. Now, I, I'd like to just enlighten our, our listeners a little bit and explain that we're just beginning what they call the season. And the season is made up of Art Basel. It's made up of the Boat Show. There's another great event down here, the South Beach Wine and Food Festival, where chefs from all over the world compete with each other, and people come and just eat until... It's almost like an old Rome. You just go to a feast, you eat as much as you can, and I don't know what happens after that, because... Are you going to film it? We're probably going to cover that. There is just so much happening. Dina, what about the Art Deco Weekend? Is that gone or is it coming? No, Art Deco Weekend is coming. What is it? Is it like a walking tour of the Art Deco architecture? What is it? Well, it's the combination of a lot of different things. Started originally for that purpose of advertising the Art Deco. Now it's a street fair that also includes some academic lectures and tours. Stuart, what about Noel Suarez? What's that about? What happened with him? Noel, as he calls himself, he uses just one name, is a local artist and he collaborated with Uberto Gucci of the Gucci fashion family. Ooh, what about what did he do? He created paintings using materials and ornaments from the Gucci family. But that's from, part of episode 18 that will be coming up next. That's excellent. Yeah. On a live on South. Okay. But it, You're kidding. Is he, what does he, he look like? He's a very good looking man. Oh! Very handsome. Oh! Dressed well, obviously. Probably wearing the Gucci suit. When I told Kyle from the California syndicated news.net office, that I was mm -hmm. doing this recording with you two tonight. She said, well, why can't they wait for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do it again. She can't. What? She's baking pies tonight. Oh, okay. Someone's got to. I did my entire Thanksgiving Day dinner today. Baked it, roasted it. It was gorgeous. Everything was perfect. And you already ate it? Yes. Because Jimmy Church. From JimmyChurchRadio.com yeah. on syndicatednews.net. Have you heard him? I have. Yeah. Jimmy Church stated and has stated for weeks that he broke the Sandusky case on YouTube. So okay. it's everywhere. And his is the first Sandusky story on YouTube. He did break the story on YouTube. Sandusky case is being heavily monitored and reported. The examiner, the Pittsburgh examiner, got their historian doing a story, and she already put us up online, and it says, with his picture, jimmychurchradio.com, syndicatednews.net. Great. <laughs> That's great. All right. Come to the front page of syndicatednews.net. What's up there is what he loaded this morning. He'll have something else tonight, and I'm sure he'll have news events all day tomorrow. And I can't leave the office because I hate sports. We went and got a, a sportscaster, and now i got to sit here and make sure I'm here to transfer the files. You make sure that everybody knows that this story was broken on this website. It was. And now the examiner has stated so and published it on their online program. Okay, and so now you, you can use it in everything you sent yes, out. Yes, yes. In fact, I'm going to be copying her page because she's going to be adding to that sports story all weekend through the holidays. So that's going to be growing and it's going to stay up until Monday. And we're going to have that syndicated news.net link on that paper until Monday. I mean, that's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. You know, 
It'll happen. By the way, Monday night's show was the debut of Kyle Williams joining the Tell Me Show, which yours truly has been doing for almost five years now by myself. And Monday was the first time that I had the show with a partner, with a buddy. And well, that was Kyle. We were sh- wow. We were shocked. Usually we get maybe a hundred for a talk, and that's when we know you know notify people about it. But the topics on syndicatednews.net, many are very serious, such as parental alienation. That's very serious. And now I'm asking the Miami Bureau to interview with Dr. McGuire in Anchorage, Alaska, for Dr. Uh, McGuire to interview with me, for me to interview with Stuart, for Dina to interview with Jill, for, for Stuart to interview with the judge, with Judge Michelle Laurence. And for all of us to talk about different topics, because... Okay, we're going to need the scorecards for this one. You got... I think it's a fabulous idea. I, li- I love the so idea diverse. and include me in. Good. I think I... it's great, and I think we should take turns talking to different offices about different topics, because the topics that that person is famous for speaking about and that they maybe have written a book about is fine, but there are many other aspects and facets to that individual's life. Mm-hmm. that they can talk about. Plus, it's always good to have somebody else asking questions so it comes from a different perspective. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, are there any other announcements anybody has to make? Yes, I'd like to talk about Art Basel that's happening this coming Wednesday. Fabulous event. Next I mean, this Wednesday? Is event. Next yeah. Wednesday. Okay, did you put it up on your website anywhere? No, I haven't. No, we're we're going to go haven't shoot it. Yet. Oh, you are? Fantastic. It began in Basel, Switzerland. It's the biggest international art expo in the world. Miami Beach is the only other place that has it in the United States. Galleries from all over the world come to exhibit fabulous artwork. So when you go to the convention center here on Miami Beach for Art Basel, you will see art I'm talking about Picasso's and Rembrandt's. November 30th, correct? Correct. Well, it starts November 30th November... through December 3rd or 4th. And hotels empty out their beds and make them into art galleries so that entire hotels are, are just giant art galleries with dealers and artists from all over the world. Watch our show. We're going to show you this whole thing from beginning to end if we can possibly do it all in in our short 15 minutes. What about the chief of police of South Beach, Miami? Is he going to talk to you guys? He has retired. Well, today we spent some time with Dina Stewart and Stuart Stewart. He has the handlebar mustache. She has the purple hair. If you want to know more about them, come to syndicatednews.net and read about and listen to their videos and view their videos. They're quite kitschy and very sweet. Their show is called Alive on South Beach on syndicatednews.net. And if you come to syndicatednews.net, look on the left and you'll see there's a purple button. That's where you'll find everything they do. And South Beach, a lot of South Beach is going to be there. If you want to get on the Alive on South Beach show on syndicatednews.net, you've got to email their office. Look on the purple button for their main page and you'll find their email, their website address. They have their own website where they have their work and their history. And there's an actual video about the Stewarts. So come to syndicatednews.net and view their films every week. They have something fantastic. Because you know the rest of us are all audio, but they video everything, which is really great. And if you need your business promoted on syndicated news, Talk to Dina Stewart and Stuart Stewart. Their number is on their page at syndicatednews.net. Look for the purple button, and that's how you'll be able to reach them. And get on the list. I think they have a waiting list. Don't you have a waiting list now to get on a live on South Beach? Yeah, the interviews, I... yeah, we do. Isn't that, that fantastic? I know. And we have interviews, future interviews. I'm so proud. Yeah. And what what I find really amazing is I'm getting calls from people I don't know. I know their names when they say, hi, this is so-and-so. And And they said, somebody suggested I call you. I'm coming to South Beach, and you do great interviews. It's true. It's true. Did you see the latest message you got? That was from Chicago, I found out. 
No, I didn't see the latest one. No, I saw the one from Canada. There's, there's, there's another one? Yeah. Oh, I have to check it out. Oh, let, let it be a surprise. I and it wasn't like for that. syndicated news. It was for you two. I have to check it out. I was thinking, did they pay somebody to write this? This is just too much. <laughs> I know. Well, we, we were outside. We came back just a little while ago. We were walking up and down Lincoln Road and just seeing what was happening and seeing who was in town and the streets were buzzing. And it was very alive and it was kind of fun. So when we came home, we called you. Prior to that, we were out, so I didn't have a chance to check everything out, but we will. Fantastic. Anyway, thanks a lot for spending some time with me. And this is Ruthie at the Florida office talking to Stuart Stewart and Dina Stewart from our Miami bureau, syndicatednews.net. And Ruthie, you have a happy turkey day. And you too. Well, thank you. Well, we were thinking of calling this season one and then take a, a couple of weeks off for the holidays, and then start season two. I think that would be fascinating. Again, if you want to interview with the Miami Bureau for the show Alive on South Beach on syndicatednews.net, there's actually a waiting list. Now, if you have a business that you have to promote, like now because the holidays are coming and you need to sell, this is a free market. This is the United States. If you need to buy your way to the top of the list, you go ahead and do that. That's perfectly acceptable. We are capitalists. We accept all credit cards, cash, wampum, anything. Yeah, we're open. <laughs> even, a, even a dinner. Hey, listen. I'm going to be here, instead of going out to Thanksgiving, I'm going to be here tending the fort because this company is young and it's growing and it's no time now for the first time we get a real sportscaster and he gets list noted for me to say, oh, I'm going to go celebrate Thanksgiving. Are you kidding? Huh? What do you have to do in regard to that? If he burps and he sends it to me in a video, I want to be uh -huh. there to immediately load it on syndicate.net. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't I... want to say, oh, five hours went by and this and this happens and I was eating turkey. I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. This company is new and a new company is like having an infant. You can't leave the house without it. Okay. I understand. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Oh, okay. So you actually cooked and you made a whole big dinner? And everything, the works. We have a very traditional meal. There's a bodega around the corner that makes <laughs> the greatest roast pork uh, and turkey. So we, we get a half a pound of roast pork, a half a pound of turkey, a uh, couple of vegetables either there or we go over to Boston Market. Uh, That's at 11 o'clock in the morning. We're done cooking by 11.30. <laughs> Bring it home. Heat it up in the microwave, and we've got a feast. John McEwen just came online. Let's see if we could add him so we could say hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're dialing him. Let's see if he'll come on. Be right there. Hello. Hi, John. Hey, how you doing? I'm here with Dina Stewart and Stuart Stewart of our Miami Bureau, South Beach. Hi, John. <laughs> I, know, Hi, John. I, know, I, know, I know who they are. <laughs> I got to give you some news. Did you hear? You about the, about the Phil, uh, Pennsylvania newspaper? Can you imagine? That is the beginning of a wave that might be starting. I went and I looked online and I found it. There was this picture and it says, JimmyChurchRadio.com at syndicatednews.net. And he broke the Sandusky story on YouTube. Well, good. And people were very offended, by the way, when he came out with that. They were sending death threats and insulting him. And, oh, they reacted horribly until they realized when they came from the mainstream media, they realized, hey, you know that guy on YouTube, Jimmy Church, he was right. And he said it weeks ago. Yeah. Well, you must Where be happy. Yeah, where did he get the news from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, like, no, but where did he find out? It's good stuff. But I think her question is well founded uh, because one of the things that happens to uh, it's the worst news that could happen is to be discredited on a source. But we're lucky that this source is right and, and being proven to be right. Yeah, and getting worse and worse. And he's very, he's a good sportscaster. He went and he found out how much the governor had received in campaign contributions. And right. he names the contributors and how much they gave him. <clears throat> That's something he's been kind of quiet about. Everything's going to come out now. And this is going to make a great movie. And what happens is, oh, of course, I'm, I'm always saying who's going to play the roles. That That's what interests me. And... 
another thing that's happening is now that we're on automatic with YouTube. So when Jimmy Church sets up that video, we're, we're notified in seconds. And I go grab it and throw it in the front page of syndicated news. So we have the latest and the greatest immediately, which is why I'm spending Thanksgiving right here in the newsroom <laughs> for syndicatednews.net. Well, that's good. <laughs> and you will not leave that computer. They'll have to credit their source. Well, it, the cutest thing was I went to Orlando Sentinel, and I went to FloridaToday.com, and I'm mentioning it openly because they know that this happened, and they know that this is part of, it's easy to prove, the, the phone records are very obvious, they're open, and this is a sunshine state, everything's out in the open. And I asked them to give us a promo because we have John McEwen, a multi-Grammy Award winner, as a CEO, we have Richard Lowry, a Pulitzer Prize nominee. We have Jill Ajizi, the president of Parental Alienation. We have the Honorable Judge Michelle Laurent, who is one of the judges that presides over Cook County in, in Chicago. That's a, a heck of a collection. We've got Stuart Stewart and Dina Stewart, artists in South Beach. And we've got Dr. McGuire, a doctor of osteopathy in Anchorage, Alaska. And we've got great interviews. And I just want to get like a leg up. And I said, just give me a little story. Give us a little mention. Give us something. And I used to work there when I couldn't get a teaching job when I came from New York to Florida when they froze the contract. I couldn't do, get a job. So I went to Orlando Sentinel and I was working in their subscription room, selling subscriptions. And they, so they know my name. And I asked for just a little mention. And the guy was very honest. He said, you've got John Hall, Okay. You've got Crystal Gale, okay, talking to John McEwen, Grammy winner, right? Mm. I said, yeah. And you've got Lincoln Anderson a couple of years ago? I said, yeah. He, well, he contributed to several administrations. He would, would give them, a, you know, global economy advice. These people mm -hmm. aren't on our show. So why are we going to give you a leg up? We just filed for bankruptcy. That's what he told me. I, I agree with you because I, I had a similar situation. There's a newscaster down here who works for the uh, Channel 10, the ABC affiliate. And when I was doing the radio show with John, uh, I told her what I was doing and I wanted to interview her for the radio show. She said, oh, well, maybe you can interview me and we can do a little spot on your show. Fast forward a couple of months later, I separated with John and, and I got this and I called her up and she said my my boss won't let me do it. It sounds all good to me. I mean like like she says keep building on it and you know we you don't know what the next step five steps down the road is but if we don't take some of these we may not get to those and you, uh, you get a lot more done saying yes and that kind of thing you know I, I think what the stewards are doing is absolutely perfect. I think that uh, Kyle Williams is going to be doing good. There's a bunch of good new things happening. I, I was really glad to get the Barry Fay interview in there. I think some, I don't know if the stewards are aware of that, but he's yeah, we like saw a, it. We saw he's it. like a kingpin of show business. It mm -hmm. gives, gives the site a lot of credibility to other publicists and stuff. Absolutely. And, and that it's all part of something that's building wonderfully. And I think we, all... did a, we did an interview this weekend. It was the book fair in town. And it's going to be part of episode 18 of the Live on South Beach and also a separate interview. But we interviewed Tom Hayden and we had an opportunity to ask him whether or not, you know, what his opinion of the Occupy movement is all about. You know who Tom Hayden is, right, John? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was an opportunity to ask. I mean, you know, he's the expert on protest movements. And it was interesting to hear what he had to Wait say. Wait till you come to hear episode 18 after the holidays, everybody, because Tom <laughs> Hayden's going to be on. And also they're having Pete are we still Hamill. Recording? Pete Hamill. Of course we are. Pete oh, Hamill will be here on the Alive on South Beach. And you know what? John, gambling, yeah. Asian gambling is coming to my Oh, yeah. Oh, every, oh, yeah. every lobbyist in Florida <laughs> is on somebody's payroll now. <laughs> and they're talking about the boat show, the film festival, the Art Deco weekend, Art Basel, uh, Tom Hayden, Noel Suarez, who got together with a Gucci, and they did quite a thing, and the Stewarts. 
film to them both. I got a question about you say Asian gambling is coming to Miami. Yeah. So, yeah. As, as, uh, an Asian, the Jenting Corporation for out of Malaysia, which is the largest gambling corporation in the world. They have resorts that, all over the world. Malaysia, where syndicated news .net has its Asian website in Malaysia. They they bought they bought a big piece of riverfront property where the current Miami Herald building is located and they want to build the world's largest gambling casino along with a 5,000 room hotel, a 60 story condo, a boat marina and 50 restaurants so all guess, in that so one guess complex. So who's competing and who's coming in? Tell them. Oh, so oh, what's Steve his name? Wynn. So Steve Wynn is coming in and he wants to put a casino in the convention center on Miami Beach. And another group wants to Yeah, put the Sahara group got their eye on the fountain blue. On the fountain blue. The thing so, is, so is gonna, it's not legal here. Well, uh, so the state legislature hasn't approved that yet. Though. They haven't no, approved no. it yet. The city of Miami, the officials are all saying, we're going to drown this city with people. They don't have the infrastructure to handle people coming in by cars. Downtown, they've got two giant arenas which would be right next to the gambling casino, you're never going to be able to drive a car through there. People down here are concerned about their quality of life by adding so many more people. Has there been any comment about the Seminoles in that subject? Because Oh, they're fighting this because yeah. they're, they're going to lose what they've got down here. And, no. and, and they've got it all to themselves. So they've got a lobby to fight this. Every, every lobbyist that I know is somehow connected to the gambling issue now. As many people that get into a position of power or have worked their way to the top, a few years go by and they don't realize that they don't know everything. They're the running the show. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, what they want down here, I'm not quite sure exactly what it's going to turn into, if yeah. in fact it happens. There are a lot of issues involved. You see, the difference here is that where they had gambling in all the other places, like in Las Vegas, in Atlantic City. Yeah. There were cities that needed it. I mean, and it didn't help. I mean, Las Vegas was a desert, so it was fine. Atlantic City was a slum. They thought it would help the neighborhood. It didn't. But here, everything is functioning just the way it's supposed to. So to suddenly throw in gambling on top of it. And Miami Beach is a tourist destination. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you the know. mayor of Miami Beach doesn't want it here either. Mm -hmm. Miami Beach, I mean, there are certain select groups. Again, in other, in other words, you, 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 you want to start an unoccupy Miami. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I like that. Was I'll tell you, it was really interesting to hear what Tom Hayden had to say about it. Don't tell us until the eight until I episode won't, eighteen. I won't. Save it. I won't. I'll save it because it was really. I mean, I found it fascinating. Just you know, coming from that generation of people in the first place. Oh, by the way, John, I don't know if you heard. Monday night, two nights ago, just forty-eight hours ago, we didn't announce it to anyone. We said it to no one. We made no announcements. Kyle Williams from Sydney. You had a thousand hits. More, more than that. Listening, yeah. Yeah. Not that's hits, good. actual listens where people downloaded well, it or listened. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's yeah. wild. So how did that happen? We didn't announce it. What we did was we gave it a really, really good current events name. Mm -hmm. I uh, mentioned the fact that uh, the Kardashians and the bogus wedding. I mentioned, we want, I said, we want to talk about that. We want to talk about the housewives programs and how young girls are going to see these programs and think that being rude and, and nasty and mean to one another is a normal manner of speech. And mm -hmm. that's a problem because these, these women haven't had acting training at all, like the, the old highly paid soap opera stars did mm -hmm. so these people since they don't know they have no education in, in the arts in, in acting they go to the basis to level to street talking and, and you know slapping each other and just behaving like basically what I said was well they're they're basically told what to do and what kind of attitude and 
this is their acting. And you know. and it's awful. And and what's happened is it's called I, we called it trash TV, and we talked about that. Then we talked about Sandusky and how Jim Jimmy Church had broken that story. Then we talked about my armadillo. Then we talked about uh, Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. Then we talked about Mrs. Obama and Mrs. Biden being booed at NASCAR. We talked about everything, just current events. And we didn't announce it. We just loaded it on, on blog talk radio, and people went bananas. And you can, you can make a point and get equal publicity by either saying, oh, that's gone too far, or being like the comedians and laughing at everybody equally. But yeah, I think that that was vindictive in a way that was kind of a, a difficult thing. Yeah. But it's one of the things about freedom of press. And but do you may- think that's a reflection of, of our society and the way, the way we deal with each other, the way we communicate now? Now, if that... If that's acceptable and people see that you can boo the first lady because you have freedom of speech, well, the next time you can yell out the F word to her, you know, you, you know, like. In, in, but in, they, they do. It's, they it's, do. Almost, it's almost like we, we condone this by people not saying, you know, what the hell is wrong with you? This is just a, that, a woman. You know, she's a mother. She's doing the best job she can. You don't like a husband. Boo her husband. Don't boo her. What do you want from this poor lady? That, my point of what I was saying is there might be equal publicity playing the good side and, and talking about how disrespectful those people are to the office or that they, you know, look, this is America. Most, Interesting mo- that you would say that because that's exactly how we handled it on, on Monday night's show. We said that uh-huh. we, people should respect the office if you don't respect the person. Exactly. It's a coincidence that you're saying that because that's exactly what we did Monday night. Yeah, and somebody has to say that because unfortunately everybody is stepping over the line. Well, People that's are because very they're angry. They're, they're, they're angry. They're frustrated. You know, whatever they had in mind in terms of the way they wanted their life to turn out didn't happen. They're, they're, they need somebody to blame. They're looking for scapegoats. So anybody that happens to pop up, well, okay, fine, easy target. And they also, just let their anger out. Also, I will say that the booing that happened was not a very large percentage of that audience. Because if it had been, you would have heard it. Exactly. You well, no, no, the, a commentator said that you didn't hear it in the recording, but it was much larger. For that no, one I, I think it's more inclined that they're taking something that kind of happened by some, some people and possibly blowing it out of proportion just because it would be news. Well, I think, I think it's, yeah, yeah. Because it's, if it was Bruce Springsteen saying, are we going to rock this town tonight? The answer would have been audible. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you know what I mean? It wouldn't, it, yeah. it just, well, do you think this is like parallel to the, the, the veteran who was gay and asked the question and, and, when he's, and, and the audience booed him, I guess because he was gay? And he asked the question about mar- you know, same-sex marriages or something of the president. I mean, you know, it was the same thing. We're doing a project with kids, and we're seeing it on their level, dealing with civility and the lack of it, and how kids get into conflicts which lead to physical fights between them over somebody didn't like the way somebody else looked at them in class. Speaking of which, uh-huh. one of the boys that was seen around town with Sandusky has been mm-hmm. severely bullied in school and had to have police protection. Yeah. A child. Imagine, a victim, and everybody's making fun of him, saying, oh, well, you were his lover and that type of thing, and they're humiliating this young boy. I mean, people can be extremely cruel, and I'm not talking about little kids. I'm talking about adults. Oh, it goes from all ages, and I think it's passed down. You know, if a parent is abusive, kids emulate what they see. Absolutely. You know, and they pick up on it on a very visceral level. It's not just saw this happen. And they get Penn, the feeling. But you also got to realize that Penn State, and especially its football team, is 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 like the, the golden calf. The lazy golden calf. Where is that What is that? I don't know. Hello. I'm here. I'm just listening. No, it's not. Whose music is that? It's not me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm at a thing. My 
kid. Uh, oh, you're a at a performance. Oh. No, no, I'm at a family event at my daughter's house in Atlanta, and there's a bunch of people. Aww. Oh, why, why don't you go back so to your family? You, <laughs> why are we all sitting around? Because I grabbed him when he came online to check his mail or whatever, and I grabbed oh. him. I, I got online so I could call Ruthie DiTucci. <laughs> And here we are. I was looking for him and I couldn't find him, so I called I called Mrs. McEwen. Yeah, she told me you were very excited. <laughs> oh, the, you know it doesn't happen every day. Yeah. No, this well, is a wonderful. It, it might be surprised and stuff like this can happen every day now. Well, my intention, guys, is to try and that that can just like you're doing for the Florida part, and to get people that have names that can't be ignored that have been on syndicated news from Crystal mm -hmm. Gale to, oh, by the way, we've got to put, we've got to put Chip Davis up in the front again. It's one of the only interviews that long with the guy that created Mannheim Steamroller. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do a lot of interviews and it can be very attractive because I wouldn't want to take the Stuarts off the front the way it is or some of the other stuff and clutter it with. with and the, people are uh, loving I, I, Eliana Douglas too. They love that show. Yeah. This week she's got Jeff Goldblum. Oh, no, that's cool. It is. It's very... Yeah, I, had, I had a long conversation with her last week. When she comes down to South Beach, she's going to stop by, and we're going to do Fantastic. an interview. Fantastic. John, do you know that there's a waiting list now to get an interview on South Beach? <laughs> there is. I mean, literally, there is. It's not a joke. It's still funny. It's adorable. <laughs> I know. It, it, I, I find it... I find it... I think it's adorable. Just outrageously hysterical. I never... I never thought but, I'd be in that kind of position. Now, Stuart, Stuart and Dina, here's something you, I'll tell you about people in my business that either sing songs or write books or are are, are, are are politicians. They'll drive for an hour to talk about themselves. That's for, true. <laughs> for free. Yeah. For free. Yeah. And, and they'll do it for free. What these people do unwittingly is give people like you content. If somebody's on the Jimmy Kimmel show, it's like a big deal or the... Letterman Show, let's go to that level. Do you know who those people are, how that happens? There's a list of 500 people they have to choose from that night. Whoever they pick is going to spend probably, if it's a band, they don't make money doing that show. The four singers get scale. They make maybe $1,000, but it's going to cost them 10 to do the show at least, mm -hmm. and often more. they got to be there the night before. The show's taped at... Rehearsals at two in the afternoon. They shoot at five. Then they got to be in two nights before. They need six, six to eight rooms in New York for three nights. You know what that can cost at four hundred, three hundred a room. Yeah, but the the exposure guarantees a lot of dates after that. But if you want to do the a point tour. is uh, not always, but not, not not always. By the way, it it just means you're playing the game. But the point is, the exposure is the same thing that. It's all treated like I had Barry Fay. This was a guy that was a number one rock promoter for 25 years mm -hmm. that wanted to be on syndicated news. Okay, I got it. You know, yeah. So the point is, you you have the vehicle that you should not be afraid to ask anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, like we have this guy who we did this interview also to be on um, episode 18 with an artist, his name is Noel, who did this collaboration with Uberto Gucci. Tonight when the three of us were talking and recording, I jumped in and said, there is a waiting list to get mm -hmm. on the Alive on South Beach on Syndicated News Dennis. However, if for the holidays you have to promote your product and you need to move your way <laughs> up to the front of the line, you buy your way up there. Yes, you can. We are capitalists. And when you said that, the phone started ringing right off the hook. <laughs> Stuart? Yeah. Can you interview people, like, by Skype? or? I asked Roy Acuff to record with me. He said yes. I asked Earl Scruggs to record with me. It was, he never recorded with another banjo player ever. Mm -hmm. And he said yes. He said I'd be proud to. You know, I've asked all kinds of people to do strange things. Uh, I mean, that was, uh, I asked Malcolm Forbes if I could interview him. He said, what do you want to know? And, you know, it's just funny. It's just... I know, it, it with, is, yeah. With syndicated news, you might get that interview. Okay, give us, give us a little time. We're slow. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got time. The election's yeah. Do you know how I got my syndicated at Yahoo back? No. I faxed them the articles of incorporation. Oh. It showed, it proved that we were a business 
and you mean you mean the LLC articles? Yeah, but how yeah. Do you fax it too? I couldn't even. I had no idea who you're dealing with with these tech companies. I keep looking on their pages until I find somebody. They always have a legal link, and oh, yeah. they gave me a fax number, and I faxed it in, and I was able to prove that we were an actual company, and they gave me back the syndicated news because somebody else had taken it. Dana Stewart, Ruthie? Yeah. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go if I'm not being too impolite. I've got a bunch of family things going on. Of course. On. No, we, we've very reached the end of this conversation. Together. We're very glad you let us borrow it for this while. Silly girl and girls and guy. <laughs> Have a very, very good, happy, great turkey day. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, and same to you. I had Thanksgiving already today. I heard. You You always are ahead of the pack. I don't like waiting till the day. That's ridiculous. Get it over and done, and then if somebody invites you to their house, you get it twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Okay, okay. Later, Ruthie, bye. I'm going to say goodbye, too. Okay, everybody, good night. Wait a minute. Okay, Before you go, you two have to say, Hi, I'm Dina Stewart. And I'm Stuart Stewart. We're alive on South Beach for syndicatednews.net.